Hey, well, welcome to Faith Builders. This is Pastor David. I'm telling you, we started a teaching last week called uh, the prayer, the effective prayer or prayer of vengeance. Prayer of vengeance. Listen, notice I said prayer of vengeance. I didn't say prayer of revenge. Why? Because we all, this is a time where everybody's wanting to take revenge. This is not the time for revenge. The, the Bible says, let us leave room for the vengeance of the Lord. Let us leave room for the vengeance of the Lord. Let me tell you something. Let me start off with this. God is the God of justice. Let me tell you something, guys. He is a just God. And he is a God of justice. And he executes speedily. I remember, again, I told you this last week. I remember going through what I was going through a couple of months ago. And I just kept thinking, oh, my God. When is this going to be over? When is this going to be over? When is it going to be over? And let me tell you something. When it finally was over, we looked back, and it actually, it wasn't even a couple of months that we were in it, but yet it felt like an eternity. But let me tell you something. God came through. The, watch this now. God came through, guys. Even when I didn't feel like he was going to get come through he came through I'm telling you he came through at the very end but he came through and it took me to another level in my faith to believe in God to be able to do this now I'm at a place that I've never been before now I'm able to believe him in a way that I've never believed him before why because I because I was able to see him come through in a way that I was like, wow, God, I would have never been able to plan that the way you did it. Can I tell you this? Quit trying to figure out how God is going to do it, but God is going to do it. Listen to me. For the church to fulfill its purpose in the earth, faith solutions is going to be a mandate. Did you hear that? In order for the church to fulfill its purpose in the earth, Faith solutions is going to be a mandate. You and I are going to have to walk out in faith. Watch this now. Did you know there's some things that you and I will never be able to fix? Only faith can do it. Only faith can do stuff. See, and that's what's wrong with the world right now. They're trying to fix things that only faith can. <laughs> huh? They're trying to fix all this stuff that only faith can do it. But it's not till you and I continue to hear the word. Why? Because the more we hear the word, the more faith we receive. We, the more faith we receive. Watch this. And the more faith we receive, the more we're able to walk out in this faith. Watch this. And the more we get to demonstrate it. Listen to what I'm about to say. So what's happening? Isaiah chapter 5 verse 13 says, Therefore my people have gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. Because you and I have no knowledge. What's this of this justice system and that God it will fight for you? You know what's happening? We're taking matters into our own hands and we're messing it all up. And God's saying, trust me, trust me, do it my way and I will come through. If I told you this, then I'm going to do it. Watch this. Proverbs 11 verse 9 says, the hypocrite, the hypocrite with his mouth destroys his neighbor. Watch this. But through knowledge, the righteous will be delivered. Through what? Through knowledge. He said, my people are destroyed for a lack of what? Knowledge. But here in Proverbs chapter 11 verse uh, 9 says this. But through knowledge, the righteous will be delivered. Let me tell you something. You and I know something that they don't. If you and I will operate in the knowledge that God has given us through his word. Let me tell you something. We are going to be delivered every time. We are going to be delivered. We are not going to be harmed. Listen, Psalm 75 verse 7 says, But God is the judge. He puts down one and exalts another. Who's the one who brings promotion? God. He is the judge. God knows exactly. Let me tell you something. This world system ain't got more power than he does. But sometimes we want to act like they do. We want to act like the world's in control and so-and-so is in control. Let me tell you, God is the judge. Let me tell you something. If somebody's in authority, God placed them in authority. Maybe you're going through something, young person, and you're wondering, oh, my God, how am I going to do this? Let me tell you something. Trust God. 
Trust God. Trust God. Let me say, if, so, if God put them there, then you know what? He's capable of taking them down. Let me show you this real quick. Let me show you some people in the Bible. Moses. Exodus chapter 4, verse 17 through 19. They tried to kill Moses when he was a baby. But the, the Bible says that they hid him. Why? Because there was something special about Moses. There was something beautiful about Moses. There was something that was extraordinary, the Bible says, about Moses. So they tried to kill all the babies that were two years old. Now watch, look what it says in Exodus chapter 4, verse 17. It says, and you shall take this rod in your hand, with which you shall do signs and wonders. So Moses, re so Moses went and returned to Jethro, his father-in-law, and said to him, Please let me go and return to my brethren who are in Egypt and see whether they are still alive. And Jethro said to Moses, Go in peace. Now the Lord said to Moses and Median, Go, watch this, return to Egypt, for all the men who sought your life is dead. Watch this, he ran away for 40 years, scared. Why? Thinking that they had control. And the whole time, God didn't let nothing happen to him. And he said, go ahead and go back. Why? Everybody who tried to destroy you, they're no longer alive. Look what it says about Jesus. In Matthew chapter 2, verse 11, it says, and chapter 2, verse 11, it says, And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their gifts, they presented the gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and mirth. Now let's go to verse 16. It says, Then Harold, when he saw that he was deceived by the wise men, watch this now, was exceedingly angry, and he sought forth to put to death all the male children who were in Bethlehem and in all its dis districts, from two years old and younger, according to the time which he had determined from the wise men. Yes, sir. Watch this now. Chapter 2, verse 19. Now, what happened? In a dream, God told Joseph, take the child, take him to Egypt. He went to Egypt for at least two years. Now, watch this. It says this in chapter 2, verse 19. It says, now when Harold was dead, hello, the one that was trying to kill Jesus, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt. What happened? Everybody that was trying to destroy the Messiah and it was now dead. Israel, watch this. Look what it says in Exodus chapter 14, verse 28. Then the water returned, returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the armies of Pharaoh and came into the sea after them. Not so much as one of them remained. What was happening? The, the, the Egyptians were following now, were following Israel when Israel came out of Egypt after being slaved 400 years. Now here they come, and here comes the, the, the enemy. What happened? They come to the Red Sea. Moses stretches out his hand. The Red Sea is, uh, uh, is parted open. They walk through. Watch this. When the enemy came, what do, you, what do you think happened? The Lord closed the Red Sea and killed every person that was trying to damage the children of Israel. Let me tell you something. Daniel, when they tried to put him in the lion's den, what happened? They put him in there. Watch this. The next morning, Daniel was sitting there and the lions were chilling. They couldn't touch him. Why? Because God was on his life. His protection was on his life. His protection is on your life. Let me tell you something. They can't harm you. They can't touch you. Why? You're too anointed for this. Let me tell you, you've been called by God. Abraham, what about Abraham that God told him that, you know what? He had, he, that he told him in, in, in Genesis chapter 12, that he says, and I will bless you and make you great and I will make your name famous and you will shall be a blessing and those who bless you, I will bless and those who curse you, I will curse. Now watch this. Verse 12, chapter 12 of Genesis, verse Three in the Amplified Bible, look what it says. He says, and I will bless those who bless you, who confer prosperity or happiness upon you, and curse him who curses or uses insolent language toward you. In you will all the families and kindreds of the earth be blessed, and by you they will bless themselves. Now watch this. There was a blessing on Abraham. There was a blessing on Abraham. He says, and those who curse you, I will curse. So here comes Abraham now. Watch this. When he comes... Now he comes to, to Egypt, and when he came, what happened? He was with Sarah, and he told Sarah, Sarah, tell them you're my sister, because if they see you, 
Because you're so beautiful, they're going to want to sleep with you. So what happened? King Abimelech came and took her. You know what happened? <laughs> Watch this. Chapter 20 of Genesis, verse 3. But God came to Abimelech in a dream and said to him, Indeed, you are a dead man because of the woman whom you have taken. For she is a man's wife. He said, hey, this woman that you have sleeping with, she belongs to my man. Look what it says, and I end with this. Psalms 105, verse 15, it says, saying, do not touch my anointed and do my prophets no harm. Let me tell you something. You and I have been anointed. The enemy cannot touch you. No one can touch you. Every time they try to attack someone, though it was Moses, Jesus, uh, the Israelites, let me tell you something. God intervened. Let me tell you something. You might be going through some stuff right now and you're wondering, God, why are you letting them do this? It's injustice. Listen to me. He's about to take over. Why? Because he's a God of justice. Remember, come back next week. I'm going to finish this. This is so powerful. Make sure you come back. And hear the rest of this teaching. Remember, this is Pastor David. Though we w don't, do not walk by sight, but walk by faith.